The world of Tunic has two magics, that of the Holy Cross and the stolen magic of the disquiet beings. But when these two magics are combined, they become a sinister fuel and grant the power to defy death. Of course, this is how the heirs cycle started, with the realization of the potential of these two magics mixed. There was a war caused from this power, and the heir was locked away, but the heir's ability to defy death creates the cycle of ruin seekers come to take their rightful place. By the time the newest ruin seeker arrives on their quest for truth, you remain who remember the legend. But there is one. A thieving scholar who does not understand. By the time of the instruction manual's writing, the librarian has already stolen the green key to the top of the sky. When the Ruin Seeker first encounters this librarian, he is hostile, using everything in his power to strike down the heir to the heir. But should the Ruin Seeker prevail, their next encounter is one filled with contempt. The librarian mocks. Here to gloat? Idiot. You did it. You released the heir, and now this. Now you must either defeat it and take its place, or find the Holy Cross and share its wisdom. Good luck with that. This librarian knows the legend intimately, but how? What spurred his quest for knowledge? How did he know there was knowledge to be sought after in the first place? This story begins long before the title of librarian. It begins with the custodians of the Eastern Vault, versed in the disquiet magic, learned in the power of red, green, and blue. The custodians were entrusted with the red key, and coaxed the last great war machine to guard it. The custodians know not how close they are to the forbidden magic, nor do they seek it out. They are content in their duties, revering the disquiet magic, but never fully understanding its depth or origin. But for one custodian, this is not enough. For one, the heir's prison in the far shore is only a temporary solution. Of late, the Ruined Seekers are becoming bolder, getting closer to the truth. It won't be long before the air is able to rain down devastation again. One custodian does not trust the Ruined Seekers to put a permanent end to the air. Whether for justice, retribution, or simply greed, the custodian believes the only way to break the cycle is to fight fire with fire. The Red Key is too well guarded for now. Instead, he begins by stealing the green key. After all, the annex is in ruins, and the frogs that live there now are easy to sneak past. He retreats to the abandoned library, lifting it away to the sky, away from nosy ruin seekers, forevermore to be known as the librarian. Here he studies, he ponders, as time passes. This former custodian knows the red, green, and blue magic is not enough. He needs the help of a deeper magic, the same magic that the first heir harnessed. His research continues by paying a visit to the first heir's seat of power, the cathedral, but his entrance is blocked. Only ghosts are allowed here now. He finds a page lost in the outskirts of the old burying grounds, a page left behind by a previous ruin seeker who had fallen to the dangers of this cursed place. At first, it seems like just a simple map of the swamp. But what is the red line? The yellow pads, they must be connected somehow. The librarian steals the yellow pad from the heir's ruined doorstep, intent on uncovering its secrets. But so far, the research on the structure doesn't prove fruitful, so he studies the page further. Its reverse is a map to the custodian's ancient monastery, long since abandoned and destroyed as the air came to power. This map even shows the devastation. Perhaps there is another clue here. The librarian travels to the quarry, and it is here that he begins to understand the true power of the disquiet magic. The same magic he and the other custodians use. Only this magic is warped, and was once amplified by the air using the power of the Holy Cross. He knows it is forbidden, but he is well aware of the legend. 
He knows he will not make the same mistake as the heir. He must find the Holy Cross and a way to the far shore to confront the heir. He takes a relic from his ancestor's past, a sentient guardian. While it does not provide any clues, it becomes a sort of companion, a house pet. However, there are ominous dark obelisks from the quarry. It is horrifying what the librarian finds at the bottom of the former monastery, but the research must continue. A power radiates from these structures, and the librarian steals himself against the screams, taking one back to the library for further analysis. He puzzles over the dark obelisk, what he now realizes is a sarcophagus, a power cell. Does using it siphon the contents for fuel? Or does it function more like a conductor? He ponders at the top of his tower. Again, the ruined seekers are getting closer, too smart for their own good. Should they come too close, threaten the librarian's mission, he makes the truck to snuff them out. Occasionally, one will have another page for him. A picture of a ruined seeker at the door in the mountains, a list of spells. But one of these pages brought to him is more interesting than the rest. A map of the teleporters. His is the bottom right, the one from the old burying ground. If only he could get it to work. The reverse of this page is a map of the cathedral. The librarian realizes his teleporter does have power from the sarcophagus, but something is still missing the power of the Holy Cross. Without a way into the cathedral, the librarian is hopelessly pondering over the map. His pet guardian brings him tea or coffee, and he spends hours upon hours staring at the map. This must be where the Holy Cross is kept. The librarian's research affords him a small sliver into the forbidden magic, summoning shadows of rudelings and disquiet beings, neither quite here nor there. He never can quite get it right. He can use the forbidden magic to rend into the canonical plane, but it is only an unwieldy small burst of the true potential. Through the rend of reality, he can see a glimpse of what the disquiet beings surely know more of, the cosmos held within a cartridge. He stares down at the world from the top of the great library. Many have sought the secrets of this world drawn by great power and other secret legends. The librarian has learned much, including powerful sorceries. He makes his home high above the clouds, waiting for seekers to bring him more pages. Although powerful, his tragedy is his belief the Holy Cross resides in the cathedral. He will never visit the far shore. This is the librarian's folly this gluttony of knowledge. He knows too much, yet not nearly enough. For wisdom that is untempered by kindness is no wisdom at all. <laughs>